So today is day two of Tiny Torch TV. We have Rebecca, we have Nadia and Ariel, and we're gonna to talk today about how they got their first, you know, 1,000 subscribers or like, what would you do and what advice can they share with you? So I'll pick on Nadia, like, how did you get your first subscribers? I assume you went to family and friends first maybe and said, mom, dad, I need a like. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's what I, I did totally first. Yeah. In the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, my, my channel's pretty beginner too, but I mean, I remember in the very, very beginning, I was just like, guys, I need 300 subscribers in order to release my next video. Please subscribe. <laughs> and I would try to just motivate them to try to get them to subscribe or something. Um, but but yeah, I just remember just begging my family and friends to get on there. I think um, some of the biggest ways was I've I've been working or I've been going to these YouTuber meetups out here in this area, and they are just fantastic. And and just any opportunity that I can find to network with people to learn about what they're doing, and then also collaborating with them. I think collaborations um, for a lot of musicians is super key in in order to grow your channel. And so just every time that I had an opportunity to sing or do a, vid a video with another artist, um, that really helps you know subscribers jumping in between different channels. And so that's probably one of the biggest ways that helped me get there. How do you approach another like YouTuber who's who's too big or too small or how did you decide that? Right. No, that's a great question. <laughs> you know, I think I think a lot of it is that you just have to determine what what kind of value can I bring to the table, you know, and what can I give them? What kind of value can I give them and what value can I receive from them? And just from there determined, well this this is how much influence I have, this is how much influence they have. And just from there determined if it matches up, can you give them what they're hoping to receive out of a collaboration? Can you receive see what you're hoping to receive as well as well so who are you trying to collaborate with next if you could like choose someone that you think is also realistic <laughs> maybe a little bit of a stretch a little bit of a stretch um i think a big one that i'm that i'm really hoping to collaborate with right now is peter hollands He's, okay and i think that's because i really really look up to him because he and his wife does what i'm hoping to to become like one day and that is they run everything in a very entrepreneurship like and they have a family you know and they just they run everything out of their garage and do what they love. Got so. it. And, and if he's listening, what's the collab idea that you would want to do with him? <laughs> hey, yo, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I it, it would just be just the timing of it. If if he chooses to say yes, then I would I would do exactly what I said before and just grab a song out of the charts and then just pitch the, the cause idea. And so okay, yeah, perfect. Ariel, we're gonna pick on you next. Yay. <laughs> oh, did you go to like friends and families too first? I think or? my first subscriber was probably my mom. Okay, or my husband. <laughs> or my dog's fake YouTube channel, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think how I hit my first thousand was consistency, was like just setting, like being committed to a schedule and be like, okay, I'm gonna post once a week on Wednesday and just like posting, like, you know, so that, that way you have like, a reason for people to subscribe to you. You know, they know that like, okay, if I subscribe to this person, they're gonna post on Wednesday. So if I come on Wednesday, I'm gonna expect a video. Um, so I think that's a good way to grow an audience because, you know, you're committing something to them, which I feel like now I'm really bad at, but in the beginning I was a lot better. <laughs> um, and then also, oh, shoot, what was I going to say? Um, when I hit my first thousand, I hit it, my first thousand, the beginning of last year and it was while I was in Japan and I was daily vlogging. So I was posting a lot. I was literally posting a video every day and I saw my numbers grow a lot from that. And that's when I hit my first thousand. So, I mean... That's another way, I guess. Too. So just posting content posting on a regular basis. Posting content, yeah. I feel and quality content too. I feel like it kind of when you post a, too much content, sometimes it kind of gets, you know, like quantity over quality. I feel like it's really important to keep that balance. So what's your schedule right now? Are you on a weekly or like a daily basis? <laughs> um, right now I'm like every other week. I mean, I'm trying, but I'm trying to get back to like the weekly thing. I I took a break during the winter, but um, now I'm back and I'm ready to go full. You're probably snowboarding too much. Yeah. <laughs> It's hard because you just like winter's like for hibernating, man. It's just I don't know, you know, just sleep all day. Okay, <laughs> yeah. perfect. Rebecca, how did you get your first one thousand subscribers? Um, so we actually had a different channel first. It was one that we don't promote anymore, um, where we put up very, very low quality videos. We didn't think through. We, it was basically like if you took old family videos of that were just horribly made and threw them up and that's how we actually that was the first channel we ever had and it didn't do very well obviously um but with pins and things I was like you know what I'll just make these tutorials and I'll put them up and and I think that we like looking back I can't remember exactly how long it took to reach a thousand subscribers but 
but I do know that I was surprised because it occurred to me that when you put something out there for the universe to see that's actually helpful to other people, it will grow. Like, And I think be- just because it was something that was helpful and it was productive and it was something that was a legitimate thought through thing, I was surprised at how well it grew. But I was surprised at how long, uh, how quickly um, we, the tutorial channel grew s- compared to the one that we didn't put any really effort into. <laughs> is it is it tougher to j- uh, grow a channel today than maybe like two or three years ago? Yes. yes. Uh, like a lot tougher or? Yes. yes. <laughs> because there's so much more. It's so saturated. Yeah. It's just so saturated. Is it too saturated? Should I just like not even start? No, it's not too <laughs> saturated because, and this is something I tell anybody that's ever like, should I start a YouTube channel? I would just be vlogging. It would just be my life. Here's the thing. Every single person on this earth has something to offer and everybody's different right so no matter what you put up at least one other person is going to be like oh wow you know that's not my life (laughs) basically because it's not and a lot of people I think have uh, good things that they can pull from whatever you have to offer so perfect if each of you had to start a new channel over do you know what like would there be a different idea that you would launch with or would you try to stay in the same space uh I kind of started off as like, you know, oh, I'm a girl. I'm going to go that beauty makeup guru route. Um, and I did it because I saw that's what was succeeding with other people and other women. And so that's kind of the route I took. And I wasn't very passionate about it. I found myself just not being motivated to make videos. And I wasn't super excited about the content I was making. Um, so I feel like if I were to go back and start over again, I would just like be like, okay, what do I want to make and what am I passionate about? Like, rather than like, I mean, like, it's important to, to know like what's trendy and what other people want, but I feel like there's a happy medium where you can, you know, make a video for what people want and also what you're passionate about. And that's probably what I would push myself to do more. Perfect. Is there anything else anyone else wants to add? Or? Yeah, that's why I love YouTube so much because in a sense, you can, as long as you have the editing and like the know-how behind the scenes of YouTube, You can pretty much do whatever you want in this life and just film it. And if you're passionate about it, that's going to come through in the videos and they'll see it and they'll they'll feel a little bit of that passion. Even if it's not their own, they'll feel it and they'll know that it's something that you care about. And so I think it will do better because of that. Awesome. I think that passion is like the toughest part. I know like there's different topics I'm more passionate about. And so I have to learn like those are the ones I focus on. I'll be in like some interviews that we've done. I'm like, this is, I just don't, I hate this topic. <laughs> Eyes glaze <laughs> right? over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it's like I, a huge difference for me. Yeah, I, I totally agree to that. I think passion is so important inside of the content that, that you make. I mean, if if your heart is there, just like just like Rebecca was saying, your your audience will fill it. And I don't know. I think if, if I could go back to the beginning of my channel, I think the one thing that I would tell myself is that it's okay. Like, relax. I want everything to happen tomorrow, and I just want everything to be so quick. And I think sometimes I forget that this takes time, and it's okay that it takes time. It, it's You're building a platform, and you're building an audience. And the most important thing is that you build a community of people um, instead of just trying to build up a whole bunch of people who follow you. You're You're fostering a community of people who you hope will enjoy your content and will want to come back so that they're a loyal community. Got it. What's a what's a fair expectation of how long a, your first 1,000 subscribers should take? I wouldn't put an expectation on it, yes. ever. I would just say, just do a few things. Make sure you're putting up good content that you care about, that you're passionate about. Make sure it's consistent, because if it's not consistent, and in fact, I even think consistency is better than quality because YouTube loves new videos. Like even if they're not perfect quality every single time, they're going to promote you. YouTube loves when you get consistent videos put up and so they'll promote you from that. Even if they're not the greatest, they'll see your channel overall and they're not going to watch every minute of your video. And so that's what they're focusing on and that's what they're going to help, I don't know, promote. <laughs> Well, perfect. Well, thank you so much for sharing your YouTube subscriber tips and join us tomorrow. We'll talk about how to generate income and get free product from your YouTube channel. So see us then. All right.